Hi, Daniel here, and welcome back to the factory for the second workshop this spring semester where we're going to be teaching you about uh, little microcontrollers, specifically the Arduino Uno, and how to get them up and operating by creating a clap on and off light switch. So we've got materials here in the factory that you can purchase to build one of yourself. I'll also post up links um, about things you need to buy to make this project reality. So let's get started. Uh, so these are the components that we're going to use. Our first up component is our Arduino Uno microcontroller board. Um, we've got several here in the factory that you can purchase from us, I think for $10 a piece. Um, we've got our little servo motor. We've also ordered a bunch. This is what's actually going to tie to the switch and turn it. Uh, we got our 9-volt battery to power the Arduino. little breadboard to build on. Um, a little LED light. And a 300 ohm resistor. See those? Uh, just so we have an indicator that the switch has been turned and off. And then finally, this is uh, our little electric microphone that's going to actually be sensing the sound. So I'm going to first show you guys how to solder on some headers to our little microphone and then we'll get started. So soldering is actually a pretty straightforward practice. Uh, just make sure you have all the tools you need necessary, your solder gun um, with the tip well on it that's heating up, uh, your little cleaning sponge, um, and of course the solder. Alright, so our little microphone here comes with a few header pins and header pins are made to be soldered into these little holes so we can mount it on top of the breadboard and connect our Arduino to it. Um, comes in a set of six so we're just going to clip this in half. All right. So we're going to put the short end of this um, up through the bottom of here. So mount it up like this. And then we're going to take our solder gun, and we know it's heated up when the solder starts to melt. So if this is your first time soldering, you're going to want to be really, really careful. Um, the biggest thing is don't burn yourself. These things get really, really, really hot. And also, we want to try not to bridge any of the pins. So if you see here, they're all really, really close, and you don't want the solder to get on top of, like to combine two of the pins, you know, our microphone won't work properly anymore. Okay, so once your solder gun is heated up, the solder will melt on the end. Make sure you clean it off properly. And the way you do this is you touch the end of the solder to where you want to go and then touch the solder gun to it push just a little bit and it'll melt this little glob on there it's not very good but you can melt it and reform it cools down really quickly so you can see right there we've got this uh, pin attached also be really really careful because touching these wires is hot and then if you want to remove it, uh, do what I just did and touch it again with the solder gun. There's one. And there's three. Alright. And then just good solder practice. Make sure you put a little tin on the end, clean it off, and then you can turn off your gun. And now we have some soldered headers onto our microphone. Here is our very basic circuit of what we're going to be doing. This is our microphone, that's our servo, and this is our little LED light. Uh, the 5 volts bar actually comes out of the Arduino pin, uh, which is where we're going to tie everything. You've got VCE, which is the voltage source for the mic, goes to the 5 volts, ground goes to ground. Uh, that's what this little symbol means and the control pin that's actually going to be sending signals to is A0 on the Arduino. Here, connected to pin 2 on the Arduino is a 300 ohm resistor followed by an LED uh, light and we got to make sure that the light is in the proper arrangement. Um, LEDs have a negative side and a positive side so the negative side will be here and positive side here. And then finally we have our servo which is controlled by pin 9 of the Arduino connected to the positive 5 volt signal and then the ground. OK, 
Okay, I just want to show you guys real quick how these breadboards work. Basically, we're going to poke wires into it and it's going to tie, um, tie our components together. And the way breadboards work is each of these rows of six holes here, so each one of these holes, they're all tied together. So essentially, you can have everything tied into this one line. So what we're going to do is we're going to put power right here and then everything that needs to be powered is just going to connect to this line. And we'll do the same over here with ground. And these are separate as well. So we have a about 40, a little over 40 inputs here. Okay, we're going to do our best to make this look as nice as possible. Uh, but I'm just going to show you guys the basic setup. We're going to tie these two sides together. Like so. Wire here and here. And then we're going to put our ground and source voltage on each of these sides. Take our wires here. Let's make our red one positive and our white one negative. Okay, then we're going to put our microphone in. So we're just going to pick a spot down here. And then we're going to tie each of these pins where they need to go. You've got VCE, ground, and out. Um, actually, let's flip it around, make it easier. See that? All right, this is going to be our ground pin. So that's where we're going to connect that. VCE, which is the voltage source. It's going to go over here. And then we're just going to have a separate wire. Um, another red one is what I got for our out pin. All right, we're going to put that in the Arduino next. Now we've got our LED, and the important thing to know about LEDs is they have two prongs that are different, uh, different lengths. If you see here, we've got a short one and a long one, and the short one is the ground. Okay, it's very important to know. Also, it's important to remember not to use these without a resistor. Um, they'll start smoking and, and maybe blow up, but anyway. <laughs> We're going to plug the negative end to our ground here. And then we're going to take our 330 ohm resistor, which actually I didn't mention this, but resistors have little color codes um, on them. You can look them up. There's charts for them. Uh, 300 ohm resistor is orange, black, and brown. And again, we've got all this stuff in these kits that we've got here in the factory if you want to make this project for yourself. So, take here. And plug it in to the positive side of the LED. And then finally, we're going to take our little wire here that's going to go into pin number two in the Arduino. Alright, so that's it. That's the whole schematic here. Now we're going to hook it into our Arduino board, which we've got here. Um, later, we're going to power it with our little 9 volt battery. Uh, but for now, when we get to the power part, we're just going to power it with the USB when we program it. Um, these are the pins. You can read them here. This is the digital PWN, and then our analog end here and power. So I mentioned the 5 volts. You can see it down there. 5 volts, ground, um, our analog in components, which we're going to plug in the mic, and then our digital out, which we're controlling the servo and LED with. So first things first, the 5 volts pin goes into there, ground pin right beneath it to the ground, our out from our microphone goes into analog in A0, LED into pin 2 on the digital side, and then our little servo here you can see on the side it shows you what uh, what pins are what on this so the left hand side is ground plug in a wire 
wire here. We're going to connect it to the ground here on our board. The center pin is signal. We'll take this yellow wire, plug it into the middle, and then the signal is from pin 9 on the Arduino. Uh, that pin in particular has servo capabilities. And then finally, our ground, oh, excuse me, our 5 volt source will go into the positive side here. Alright, and there we go. This is our whole circuit, and the rest from here is coding to get our claps to work. So one thing I forgot to mention about our microphones is that they are adjustable gain, which basically you can change the sensitivity of it um, using this little knob right here. Um, so that's something you'll have to play with to adjust to see how loud you need it to be to, um, to switch your light on and off. And we can also adjust it just a little bit in the code, um, but if your servo is acting funny, then it may be because your sensitivity is too high and it's just picking up ambient sounds. Be really careful though when you turn it because it's really easy to turn it too far um, and you'll twist off this little knob. So just play with it gently and, uh, and make sure you use the right, the right screwdriver. Alright, so here's the code for the servo uh, controlled clap light. Um, it's pretty pretty simple and you can use this code but uh, you may need to change a few numbers around just to um, just to get your system to work exactly like you want. Um, if you don't know much about coding in Arduino, I think it's C um, C coding. Definitely uh, look it up online. There's lots a big community of programmers out there that know how to use this software um, or this coding language. So first up, uh, we initialize a bunch of our variables. Um, it's important to like keep libraries in there for things like servos. We um, define our LED and assign a pin to it. Um, but the two important variables you need to know here are the trigger and timeout. Uh, the trigger is basically the sensitivity number of your mic. Uh, so this is what mine's at 0.6 right now. And then the timeout is the amount of time in between the claps that it'll take to, um, to operate. So you may need to change those numbers around to adjust your sensitivity. Uh, because basically if your mic is too sensitive then you know, people talking will set it off or, you know, maybe a mouse gets into your room and claps a couple of times and it'll turn on your light and, and we don't want that. So uh, here's the initial setup. We declare our LED pin as an output. We attach our servo to pin 9 um, and we write a degree value. This is also a number you may need to change based on how, you're, um, how far you're actually pulling the switch. But I think these numbers will work really well um, and they're also at the end of the code as well. So the main loop here, uh, this chunk of code I got straight off of Adafruit's website on how to use this mic, and basically it converts the sound input into this volts value. And we use this volts value um, in our logic here. So if the volts is higher, greater than or equal to our trigger value, so basically if it hears a clamp, um, then we're going to check to see uh, this va variable here says true if it's heard a clap before. Um, and I'll, I'll walk over those the functions that define that down here. But if, if it hasn't heard a check before, the else statement, we go to set check and it changes the check value to true. So it's heard a clap and then it delays just a little bit of time. So um, the amount of time it takes the code to run and wait just a second to hear another clap. Um, if one clap happens, if check is true and check time has elapsed, so there's been too much time, uh, then it's going to reset the check, so you need to have two claps to get it to work. So if check is equal to true, and it hears, um, it hears a sound above the trigger, then it does our toggle light function and also resets check. Uh, these are our functions down here. Toggle light is right here, and it basically just says if the light value is true, um, run the light off function, and if the light value is false, otherwise turn the light on and that value is set down here in the light on and light off function. It writes a servo, vo uh, servo value to turn it that far, uh, turns our LED on, delays a little bit, and then says light true. So that's the gist of it. Um, with, there's a few more functions here that deal with timers and things like that, but 
you may need to to mess around with maybe the servo degree uh, variables and the timeout and trigger values to get it to turn and operate like you want. So I just want to show you real quick what our system can do. It's designed so two claps will turn the motor which is actually going to flip the switch. Um, if you clap just once um, unless you clap again in a certain time period it's not going to turn again. So light on, light off. Clap once and nothing. So they have to be pretty con pretty quick. And there's our clapper light. So just to show you guys real quick what my idea for the mount is, I'm going to take this little board and uh, and I've traced out the locations of where I'm going to put everything. Um, going to route a little hole for the battery. Going to cut a hole here to zip tie the board down and then um, our actual mini breadboards here have, have tape on the back end. Here on the other side is where I'm going to cut a hole. Um, to mount our servo and the servo is going to go in on the opposite side and it's going to kind of stick out from the wall and then we're going to take this uh, shim here that I, I cut a hole in and that hole fits over the light switch um, I'm going to show you guys how to attach it to the, to the little servo pin and then we're going to add a couple legs to this so it stands out a little bit from the wall and hopefully that'll, that'll do what we're, we're meaning to do okay so here's my mount um, it's a little rough around the edges, but it'll work. Um, I've got this little place here for the battery. We're going to tape it down. Uh, this is going to adhese. Our breadboard will go right here, and our Arduino is going to be here, and we're just going to like zip tie it down. Um, I've made a little stand for it so it stands out on the wall. I'll put some Velcro here so you can mount it up, and then that is where the servo motor is going to pull. And you see I've attached... Um, I've attached the little spindle for the servo right here to the end of it and so when it rotates it's just gonna like shift this rod um, up and down to flip the switch alright so I'm gonna mount it all up and see how it works this is definitely a temporary mount because uh, it's blocking the door but um, you get the gist of it you let the the switch arm come down and it'll like slip over top of your light switch you may need to put like a, a zip tie to hold it on there and then it also got to find a way to make sure that it stays on the back. Um, you don't necessarily have to use a piece of wood. If you had a piece of like uh, hard wire, uh, that would probably be best and easiest. But um, that's uh, that's it mounted up. Pretty rough. You guys can make it look as pretty as you want. But this would be how you mount it above your light switch. And here's the final test. Hey, <laughs> it works.